Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at the Pose Mixer tool and how you can use it to create and combine unique animations in iClone. This tool utilizes RL motion files, which we'll explore a bit more later on. The Pose Mixer is a powerful and intuitive addition to iClone's already expansive arsenal of motion editing tools. It allows you to mix and match elements of individual body parts from different motions, as well as flip, mirror, and copy elements of RL motions individually to create nearly endless combinations and therefore expand your animation library exponentially. Let's start off with the basics of mixing poses. If I apply a pose directly from the library, I'll end up with just that, no surprises there. I'll undo that and go into the Pose Mixer, which has its own tab in the Edit Motion Layer tool window. You'll see a dummy image where you can select and deselect areas of the body to mask individually. If everything is highlighted green and I apply the same pose motion, I'll get the same result as nothing has been masked out yet. However, if I mask out the main torso and legs and reapply the pose, you'll notice that only the areas of the dummy in green will have the motion applied to them. There are quick presets below the dummy, and if I select the legs one and apply a different pose, only the leg pose will be applied. If the pose includes a change in hip transform position, ensure that you select the torso as well, such as I'm doing for this sitting pose. There are also a few selection options at the top right to select all dummy parts, flip selection, and deselect all. Along the bottom, you also have a few presets for mirroring selected parts. Okay, let's look at how we can combine these poses with animations. Here I have a walking animation, and I'll start out by masking out everything but the arms and applying a new pose. You can now see the combined result when I play back. Another thing I can adjust easily is mirror left to right to get both arms in the same position. If I want to return to the original pose from our original motion clip, I can simply use the reset button. Notice that I'm doing it halfway through the clip, which will automatically create a transition between the initial keyframe and the one we created when we hit reset. Maybe it's a bit too plain and smooth, so we can right click on the keyframe we made and use a transition curve preset to spice things up a bit. Naturally, you can also use the Curve Editor tool to get a bit more control over the transitions from one keyframe to the next. Here's another scenario where I have a talking animation, and if I mask out everything but the legs and apply a sitting pose, our character will be seated, but you'll notice that the hip remains in place, which is too high unless she is sitting on a bar stool or something. As I mentioned earlier, for motions like this where hip position is changed, you'll want to ensure that you also select the torso when applying them to get the seated position at the correct height. Finally, let's look at a scenario where we can blend one pose into another and align them properly. I'll apply a pose to start off and then proceed to mirror it. You can easily save these to the content manager to create your own pose library. What I'm going to do next is ensure that the auto extend option is enabled on the timeline and then apply a second pose. You can see that this creates a clip in the timeline, and we now have a transition from one pose to the next. However, it doesn't look natural due to foot sliding. This is because the alignment is on the hip by default, so it won't move. To fix this, we can switch over to IK mode and decide the target for alignment when applying the pose. Note that if the hip node is selected when applying the pose in the IK mode tab, the second pose will automatically align to the hip transform position of the first pose, creating the foot sliding. What I'll do then is ensure that the character's right foot node is selected and reapply the pose. What this will do is align to that bone so that it remains planted throughout the transition. We can then repeat the process, only this time selecting the other foot and applying the mirrored motion that we saved earlier. This way we can easily create a transition from one foot to another. If you right click on the created clip, you can use the time warp option to time the transition a bit more naturally as well. Be aware that layer keys will be set automatically when you apply subsequent poses, so you can use these to further tweak the animation timing for more natural looking results. That's it for our brief introduction of the Pose Mixer tool. 
It's a fantastic and intuitive way to make motion editing quicker and easier and allows for an amazing number of combinations of existing motions. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.